And the winner is Canberra. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, announcing our 2023 different drop winery of the year. It's Ravensworth wines. Couldn't be anyone else this year, Tom. Brian Martin, uh, an absolute legend. One of the most creative winemakers in the country. Ravensworth is based out of Murrum Bateman, which is just a clip out of Canberra. One of the most uh, eclectic and incredibly diverse ranges of wines in the whole country, I think. And value for money, quality, interest, uh, Ravensworth has a lot. A remarkable producer. We've been working with Ravensworth uh, for close to a decade now. Um, but Brian Martin, with his background, working alongside Tim Kirk at Clonakilla and making some remarkable wines there, uh, now has his own estate um, in Canberra with his wife Jocelyn uh, and son Lewis alongside him. And the wines from Brian every year, he, he continues to push the boundaries of what's possible with winemaking in for Australia, sure. doesn't he? Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and the quality has just gone like this over the last sort of decade. Uh, and this year, just across... <laughs> <laughs> There's no uh, straight line. <laughs> but this year, pretty much across the board, uh, considering we had the first estate release uh, in a couple of years uh, from all the wines off uh, Brian and Jocelyn's block, and just a suite of ridiculously good regional wines. Yeah. Uh, every wine was just like an absolute banger from beginning to end. So and I think that's what contributed to him winning the award this year. I mean, to be frank, we could have given him this award, you know, many years. Yeah. But uh, having this full range of estate wines and the regional wines for the first time in a few years all together uh, was just an emphatic um, suite of wines from Brian and, as, as Wade said, quality, uh, just remarkable. Um, and, and, you know, amongst our top two or three most popular producers every year. So a no-brainer for a man with lots of brains. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and in true Ravensworth style, we're going to have a quick look at some of the wines that we think sum up what Brian's doing, but in true Ravensworth style, we're going to do it backwards. Yes. Right? We're going to start with the reds. Because I, think, the I think this is this sort of tells the story of Ravensworth, sort of doing it this way. So the first wine we're, we're tasting is the 2021 Estate Shiraz Viognier. So this is kind of the wine that really kicked off the Ravensworth label, because obviously Brian's connection with Clonakilla, uh, where he was assistant winemaker for 15 years, made the country's most iconic and collectible Shiraz Viognier for that amount of time alongside Tim Kirk. Uh, and, you know, his first release of this was sort of the start of Ravensworth. And then uh, in 1998, him and Jocelyn planted their own vineyard. He's got four clones of Shiraz on that block, uh, all which contribute to this wine. 2021, absolutely brilliant season. Cool season too. Yeah, yeah. First of a few cool years as part of the La Nina um, that was experienced oh. in Australia. Um, for those that don't know this Shiraz Viognier style, it's inspired by the Cote Roti um, region of Northern Rhone where uh, they actually co-ferment, say, 4 or 5% Viognier with the Shiraz. Uh, and what the Viognier gives is incredible aromatics and florals and can just make a, a really silky, soft palate and mouthfeel as well. Man, Tom, that is incredible. So the, the real signature of this wine is the just the suppleness and the silkiness of the texture of it. And aromatically, it's incredible. Like yeah. it smells like kind of like an old spice cupboard. Yeah. Um, really beautiful sort of bright lifted perfume. And how slick and slippery yeah. it is on the palate. Yeah, but Ooh. just this little kind of subtle charcuterie meatiness to the wine as well, which is possibly something a little different about Brian Shrez Viognier compared to say the Clonic Killer, which is very polished, very slick, very powerful. This tends to be a little bit more mid-weight, uh, a little bit more earthy, meaty, but still with all those gorgeous aromatics as well. Yeah, it's and it, an amazing it, wine. And it sells beautifully. Last year at our Christmas party, I ripped out a 2015 vintage of this. You did too. And isn't, it was, isn't he good? <laughs> <laughs> and it looked it looked unreal, but it was still a baby. Like that 15 still had 10 years in it. Uh, wow, and, and that this, is so delicious. This is going to drink beautifully for a couple of so decades. So. I haven't tried this since it was released, actually. So. Um, looks amazing. Uh, birthday wine for me. I might have to tuck a few Ravensworths away. Um, one of one of the most collectible wines that we sell, uh, and, and definitely want to check out, guys. If you love, you know, I iconic Australian Syrah or Shiraz, this is a, a real modern icon, isn't it? Absolutely. Oof. Amazing. Damn, that's good. Okay, so moving on to wine number two in our backwards lineup. Um, we're sticking with red, uh, and we're looking at the 2022 Sangiovese. Uh, believe it or not, Wade, 20th release of this wine from Ravensworth. Crazy. So, yeah. And he did it in just 10 years as well. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
I don't even know what that means. But yeah. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, so uh, Ravensworth, this has become known as the regional Sangiovese. Uh, it was originally just the only Sangiovese while Brian was waiting for the, for the estate fruit to come online. But yeah, this is really the wine that I guess kind of like really put Ravensworth on the map. It mm. sort of exploded the brand. Uh, it was a 2014 vintage, so like, you know, two, two vintages in. And, uh, 12, 12 vintages in. Uh, yes, sorry. <laughs> so 12 vintages in. So that's your math. The, the 10 year overnight success that was Ravensworth. <laughs> I've got to just pause for a second because that is like yeah. a perfect example of what I think makes Ravensworth such a great story. He's very well known amongst like wine lover circles these days, Brian Martin, but he was plodding away doing his thing for a good decade before anyone gave a shit. Yeah. He, you know, he's been working at this for a long time. Uh, and fine-tuning his craft and, and now seeing all this success. And everyone's like, oh, who's this new producer? <laughs> yeah. Brian's not, you know, he's no spring chicken. Yeah. And um, he, he's been, you know, working on his craft for, for decades. Yeah, so the, the 2014 of this uh, absolutely smashed it. Uh, it got, uh, it won James Halliday's Best Other Red uh, mm. of the Year. It was 25 bucks a bottle. It yeah. got 97 points and it just... Fucking walked out the door. Yeah. So um, we sold a you know truckload of it, um, and we were like, all right, this guy's our guy. Yeah. Uh, so that was a really important wine for us because we were so tiny back then. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's been basically like for my money, I reckon it's Australia's most varietal and best value yeah. version of Sangiovese in yeah. this more approachable like entry level price point. So hard this, to argue with that. Yeah. So this new vintage is thirty two bucks. Yeah. You know, which is still Amazing crazy value. value. Yeah. And, and it has all of those sort of savoury hallmarks of, of true Sangiovese, where I think Australian Sangio can go wrong sometimes. This is so fresh and fragrant and, and vibrant, um, but it's got those savoury nuances too, the, the red, the, the herbs, alpine herbs, yeah. you know, <laughs> yes. cherries. And, oh, For amazing. sure. And really, I think the thing that tricks up a lot of Australian producers of Sangiovese right. is, is the tannin management. Yeah. Because a lot of them, you know, you can get some nice juicy fruit out of a lot of Australian sand, but they really lack a little bit of definition. He, Brian is a master of tannin. Yeah. And the, the shape he gets in this wine, it's got just enough savouriness and sort of structure in the background. So it's not just a bright red, juicy, juby thing. Yeah. Uh, and it makes it a perfect sort of food match. Like this is... Well, speaking of food, I mean, you guys, if you look at these amazing labels, um, you know, they're not for the faint-hearted there. Brian... Um, is quite the chef and, and, and likes to, to uh, let's say, source his own ingredients. Um, and, I mean, it's amazing his background. He's written cookbooks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His cookbook yeah. is called Tongue and Cheek, yeah. <laughs> which is excellent. I remember years ago this ridiculous photo he had on Instagram and we were like, and there was just this picture of an entire pig's head upside down in a huge pot. So you can just see this snout oh my poking God. out. And I'm like, what is he doing boiling a head? Anyway. Yeah, so it's like sort of, you know, tail to snout to tail sort of yeah. cooking. Um, very much like what he does with his winemaking, where it's like, you know, including whole bunches, lots of skins, yeah. like the whole lot. So so this is these are obviously the new current releases that we're looking at. But um, as we alluded to before, we've been um, working with Ravensworth for a long time. Wait, I'm really interested. Um, I asked you before to think about this. If you could pick one Ravensworth wine in, over the history of our involvement with Ravensworth, like a favourite, a standout from, from Brian and, and Jocelyn. Jesus. Um, yeah, so I had like a million... I like, gave you plenty of notice. You so did. You <laughs> so I was going to say the Flonk, which is the Cab Franc Sav Blanc blend that he did oh, years ago. Oh, the Tindery. Yes, just yeah. because it's a delicious word to say, Flonk. Yeah. Uh, so I really like that. But I, what I actually think it is, was, was 2015 Riesling Ancestral. Like oh, his first pet nat, yeah, yeah, yeah. which was like the first time I'd tasted a pet nat that felt like fine wine. Yeah. It was like fancy booze, but just made like a, fe- a pet nat. Yeah. Uh, and that was like all egg fermented, insane Good acidity, choice. brilliant texture, yeah. lovely bead. It was like, it was like 30 bucks a bottle and just, I drank bucket loads yeah, of it over I summer. I remember that wine. Mine was, um, I don't know if you remember, uh, or oh, vintage, um, shit, 20... 20- 2016 or 17, I reckon, um, the the Rosé de Florette. He oh, did. yes. A really flory, funky, wild Rosé. So he had Nebbiolo. He wanted to make a Nebbiolo Rosé, I think in that um, closer bond sort of inspired style, French style, French style with like 
um, wild ferment and, and under floor to give it these, you know, nutty, oxy sort of characters. Yeah, that was wild. That and one. he was explaining that how hard it is to do because you have to just leave it on its own. I think it's two years in barrel, untouched, and just trust that it's doing its thing. And apparently it can't be have any other bacteria involved. Uh, it can't be like too acidic or not acidic enough. And he said it's as hard as mating with pandas. <laughs> I, I've never heard that saying before. But that's, <laughs> I was going to give that one to you, Brian. I, I trust you know what you're talking about. But that wine was wild because we did a tasting here at Different Drop HQ yes. with Brian and a bunch of our customers. And do you remember? We, yes, pour, we poured that wine and we were like, here's the Shiraz, here's the, you know, the white bland, the Pinot Gris, and here's this thing. And it split the room. There were yeah. some people that didn't get it, but I think it was actually our best-selling wine of the night because the people that liked it absolutely loved it. It was yeah. wild. That was fucking weird, that wine, man. <laughs> that was really weird. Um, but delicious. Delicious. Uh, which sums up uh, quite a lot of Brian's wines, which is... Um, yeah. Absolutely. Amazing wine. Okay, moving on now to wine number three, and we're getting a little wild, folks. We're getting a bit funky. We're getting a bit dirty. <laughs> it's the possibly Australia's number one amber wine. I mean, that's a massive call. Huge call. Massive call. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and make it, because year after year, this wine uh, continues to offer so much fun, and it's a wild experience, and it's always changing as well. Um, so this is Brian Martin's seven months blend of Riesling, Gewürz, Tremina, and Pinot Gris, Alsatian inspired. Uh, and wait, do you have any idea how long roughly it spends on the skins, the seven months? <laughs> yeah, I think it's seven months. Roughly seven months. <laughs> roughly yeah. seven months. Um, and, but I mean, like, we're not talking about like a baby orange wine here. Like, no, look at cool. that. That is, yeah. that is so cool. Very cool. And so uh, in terms of winemaking, uh, sees a, a mixture of concrete tanks, um, ceramic eggs, you know, old, old Fudra, large format oak, very minimal additions, uh, very natural and just a, a crazy drinking experience. I, I love this one. My God. All right. So I absolutely love Negronis and this screams Negroni to me because it's like all red fruit, like a little bit of orange peel. Really bitter and dry and spicy on the finish, but fresh, yeah. lively. It's just got like it's got everything that I want a Negroni to have. Basically, it's getting, it's getting better and better in the bottle too. I yeah. remember when that was first released, it was it was really funky. It was really wild. It's interesting, but now it seems to have really settled into itself. It's got length. It's building a bit of power and, and weight on the back palate. Crazy aromatics, and it's got a kind of. Um, you often think of fairy floss, you see Pinot Gris, Gewurz, Tramina, these sort of more fruity sort of yep. aromatics. Um, but then it's got that kind of nuttiness and flory, oxidative sort of character too. Yeah. I mean, huge call Australia's best orange wine, but I think, you know, show me a better one. All right. Well, let's let's go out with a bang then. We're going right. to usually be finishing with the big red. We've flipped it on its head. And we're going to finish with a, a bit of a palate cleanser, mate. Yeah, let's go the Riesling. So I guess, like, why we're finishing on this is because this is kind of like where, if this is, if the Shiraz Beyond here is where the Ravensworth story started, I think this wine really exemplifies where it's at at the moment. For me, I reckon this is just flat one of the best Rieslings in Australia. And it's around 30 bucks a bottle, so the value is insane. Uh, but it, the, the precision and the clarity of this wine is what you see across all of Brian's range now. Yeah. There's been lots of like, you know, we talk about like the, <laughs> the Rose de Florette thing. Like yeah, there's been yeah. some gnarly experiments over the years and some stuff that's kind of weird and out there. But what Ravensworth looks like today is just wall to wall absolute precision. Mm -hmm. And I think this wine exemplifies that. And it's not as though he's just taking like a tank, a stainless steel tank of Riesling and letting it do its thing, right? This is still, it's got plenty of different techniques, a um, little bit of skin contact, lots of different ferments. It's got concrete, ceramic, bit of oak, warmer ferment with lots of grape solids, which all add texture. Uh, and the reason he can get away with it is because the acidity is like, just like, yeah, knocks, knocks you back in your chair. Yeah, it's it's crazy. so brisk. You wouldn't want to taste this on its own when it was young. But all of that texture worked in just works such a, a treat. Really good Aussie Riesling can be really good, but still one dimensional. Yeah. So you're just getting like straight up and down citrus, like lemon, lime, you know, bit of grapefruit, whatever. Oh my God. Uh, but what this has is like nuttiness and yeah. like sexy kind of salty sort of back palate. Yeah. 
as you say, that insane razor acid. Drink it now, drink it in 10 days, drink it in 10 years. This thing is an absolute banger. Now, the next generation at Ravensworth mm. is getting involved, right? So young Lewis, met him a few times now. Um, I remember we did a, during COVID, we did a little Instagram live video with Brian Martin. And I don't even know, but when we hit live, up popped this young bloke sitting next to Brian. They were sitting outside in a little beanie. He was very quiet and shy. And that was Brian's son, Lewis, who's, uh, who was just starting at the time to help out with the winemaking. is now really heavily involved. Yeah, great dude. Um, so good to see that like it, the, the family business is gonna get passed on to the next generation. So well, I don't know if you can tell, but we absolutely love this winery. Um, we've, we've joked in the past that if there was like a desert island winery where you yeah. could just pick one brand and that's all you could drink, take it to a desert island, you would probably take Ravensworth because he just has everything covered. Everything covered. Everything yeah. covered. There's textural whites. There's the granary, you know, Marsan Roussan blend. There's Chardonnays. There's the Tinto Spanish inspired blend. There's Gamay. Uh, there's all sorts of other little small batch releases. We never know what's coming. There's Fiano. There's a Fiano in the fridge. Did oh. I tell you that? We have a sample of a Fiano in oh, the fridge. Excellent. Yeah, let's yes. crack, crack that after this. Yes. <laughs> let's. So, so much going. We love Ravensworth. I don't know if you realise just quite how much I love Ravensworth. Well, okay. Go so, on. I actually, I prepared a haiku poem. <laughs> <laughs> what? Brian Martin, this is for you. Oh my God. In Murram Bateman. I think it's right. Murram Bateman. Yeah, five. Two. In Murram Bateman, an artist, mad scientist, they call him Brian. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Brian. Congrats on what must be the crowning achievement of your career. Dude, I that, think winning the. That was beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I've been working on that all week. <laughs> winning uh, the different drop winery of the year. People buy these wines, they are spectacular, unique. Wildly delicious, great fun, great value, uh, and scarce. So um, get on board, Ravensworth. Uh, go, don't go visit him probably because you'll never escape. But great, great family <laughs> business. <laughs> yeah. And thanks for the support. Subscribe to our YouTube channel because we really, really want you to. Um, and we're going to do more videos, which are great fun. Yeah. So, thanks, awesome. guys. Thanks, thanks for watching. Cheers.